Okay, so finally we're going to wrap up this whole caching thing. So I promise this is the last video on caching and you don't have to hear me say anything more about caching again. Okay, but it's important to go through this stuff. So here we go. So finally, another way to cache, which is well, what I consider to be the more appropriate way, is to cache using the simulation uh, time control property page. So where is it and how do we do it? It's pretty simple. Let's open up an explorer window here and make sure that here up here in your scope you're switched to uh, environments okay and what you want to do is go to your environment expand it just by clicking on the little plus icon and down here you should see a simulation time control property okay so let's select the property and open up its PPG you can do that by hitting enter on the keyboard and um, Remember we had this uh, this tab here. We spoke about the simulation time control before, but we only spoke about uh, how to control the uh, the length of the simulation and stuff like that, as well as the play mode. But we never actually talked about cache. You know, I, I said that we would end up doing that later, and later is now. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay. So now here we have this option for caching, which you can turn on or off. Okay. We're going to be using that. Over here we have a tab for caching files and we could set some options for what we're going to cache. For example, we can set up the current path template to be the project path, a temporary path, or some alternate paths like A, B, and C. So we've already talked about that before uh, in other instances in, in, uh, in ICE and, and other places, so it should make sense to you. We can also choose a version string. What that basically means is uh, a little name to add to your particles. So you'll see so you'll see what I'm talking about once we uh, cache this out. So right now the version string is A, and we can also copy the files to a second path if we wanted to. But I don't really need a backup of this, so I'm not going to copy to a second path. Let's go back to simulation. This is pretty simple how it works. All we have to do is turn on caching, and then when we hit play, any frames that play down here in the viewport are going to go ahead and cache. Now, there's a couple of important options here to remember, like lock cache, for example, save caches to mixer, as well as the play mode is also very important. Now, here's what I recommend. When you're tweaking your particles, when you're working in XSI before you're finished with everything, work with live and interactive mode to uh, tweak and fine tune your particles. When you're ready for the final render, switch to standard mode, because standard mode is going to work with things like motion blur. So standard mode is the best mode to use when you're ready for your final, final, final render and you're ready to send it out to the render farm and get the, uh, get the animation done. Switch over to standard mode. Also turn on caching. We don't have anything really cached right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the first frame of the animation. Okay. Now to cache, there's no button that says cache. So the way to cache is you simply hit play and all the frames that play are going to cache. Now, over here we have this button called Toggle Simulation Info. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And over here you can see the frames that are caching. So this it's very important to have this kind of uh, information available to you so you can see what's going on. In this case, we can see what's happening is the current frame that's caching as well as all the frames that, uh, that are caching until. So we get these two readouts and we know what's going on. So when this finishes and gets to frame 1000, it would have finished calculating and caching all the frames for this particular simulation which takes a little while but it's worth it because all you have to do is play through this thing once and uh, after that we're set to go okay so once it's done you'll notice it started over because I have looping turned on that's perfectly fine I'll just hit stop go back to the first frame of, uh, of the simulation here okay and now what I want to do is click on lock cache I want to lock the cache because what this does, it makes sure that the cache is no longer re-simulated. So all the information and data that's there, assuming that I'm happy with it and I'm ready to send this out to the render farm and render, is going to be locked down and now it can't be edited, re-simulated, so you can rest assured that these, this uh, particle simulation is going to stay intact and it's going to stay exactly how you left it. Okay. So once that's done, let's go ahead and hit 5 on the keyboard to open up a file browser. Let's go to simulation here, scene root, point cloud, and you'll see a file here called point cloud, and there's the version string that we talked about before, the letter A, and there's the frames from 1 to 1,000. So I uh, XSI 7 did in fact 
cache the simulation to an ice cache file. So let's close that. Okay. Now that's it. If we uh, skip ahead, for example, if we skip ahead, for example, now we can go ahead and we can scrub forwards and backwards. Just like we did with a couple of videos back when we uh, used the animation menu to, uh, to write that uh, file to disk, the cache, the cache. So there we go. Another thing that we can do is um, we can hit this save caches to mixer. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now this uh, window asks us to name this uh, our action name. So basically we're going to save out this simulation almost like if it was an animation on a character. So let's call this my sim and we'll click on this option here to add clip to the mixer. Click OK and now we get a warning. Uh oh. Exercise telling us again just like it did a couple of videos back. Look you can't have a simulation and you can't have uh, the cache file applied to this uh, particle system at the same time. So you're gonna have to choose. Do you want to keep the simulation or do you want to keep the cache? Which one do you want? I'll hit yes so that we keep the cache and get rid of the simulation. So if I select the particles here and I go back to selection in the uh, MCP, you'll notice the ice tree is gone. We no longer have it. But the good thing is that if we select this uh, point cloud, the particles, and hit Alt 9 to open up the, uh, sorry, and we hit Alt and 0 to open up the animation mixer, you'll notice now that Here's our uh, simulation loaded up in the mixer so we can scrub forwards and backwards. Isn't that great? We can also change the size of the clip so we can reduce the size to something really small. So now if we hit play, the particles play by really fast. Or we can extend the size of this by a lot. For example, we can take this thing and... For example, we can take it. Hit enter to open up its PPG, change the scale to something like uh, 0.5 for example, and now it's going to play almost like it's in slow motion. It's going to play uh, twice as slow. So you can see the particles are starting to appear right there. It's going very, very slow. So pretty neat how you have so much control over the uh, simulation afterwards. Once it becomes an animation clip, you can do whatever you want to it speed it up, slow it down, blend it with other animation clips and, and do whatever it is that you need to do to get it to look the way it's supposed to. Okay. All right. So that pretty much is going to do it for caching. We're finally done with caching and we can move on uh, to some more exciting stuff here with ice.